Yeah. <laughs> I have flown, I have sailed, I have moved about this world of ours, and ever in search of the finest of its kind, we bring you the tops in Spine Chillers. The Creaking Door. The manufacturers of State Express 3.5 Filter King cigarettes take pleasure in presenting The Creaking Door. Good evening, friends of the Creaking Door. The Creaking Door. We've got some rather interesting specimens on view here. Some old skeletons and a skull or two, which proved quite fascinating once I'd managed to remove the, uh, the uh, outer covering. Uh, come to think of it, one of those skulls looks just like yours. <laughs> Moved in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders. And the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3-5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3-5s today. The grey stone building stands at the end of the alleyway. There's a small brass plate on the door. It reads, Metropolitan Police Morgue. Don't miss much, do you, Tom? I mustn't miss anything, will you? I'm going to keep my job as a crime reporter. What is it, another hit-and-run case? That's what they say when they brought him in. Oh, made a proper mess of him. Multiple fractures, Dr. Wilson said. Anyone interesting? Is, is it worth a paragraph in my paper? No, 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 no. Just another tramp. Never had a bomb on him. That's pity. Stuck for a story. Accidents aren't my department. Yeah, you never know. It might be. Struck from behind, he was. Uh, not have a look? Yes, will you? I won't. Although I'd been in that large, cold room many times, unlike Willie, I never felt completely at ease. I walked over to what Willie euphemistically described as his cold storage bins and watched him pull out Section 26. Hey, look at him. Fished out the Thames he was two days ago. Looked terrible when he first came in, but I cleaned him up like. We, we have lots of conversations without uttering a word. Yeah, I suppose you think I'm mad, huh? No, not, uh, not you, Willie. Not on your life. How did you get into this job? Oh, well, it's an old story, Tom. Hey, you see, I was gassed during the 1418 war. Uh -huh. yeah. Shortly after I returned, the missus died. We never had any children and no relatives to speak of. It was difficult finding a job. For one thing, I, 
I couldn't stand eat of any sort. My lungs would start playing up. Oh, believe me, Tom, I walked hundreds of miles through the streets of London before I found a job that no one else wanted. Uh -huh. And a job, so to speak, which didn't require much effort and which most certainly was cool. <laughs> yeah, so here I am. Yeah, you are indeed. And I don't know what to do without you. Mind you, it isn't the sort of job that anyone can do. Oh, no, of course it isn't, Tom. You often find some wise character at the pub who says, how can you work there? <laughs> well, my argument is, somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to look after him. Yeah, that's a point of view. <laughs> you know, young Tom, you know, you know what I'd like to be if I hadn't this job? No, really, what? I'd like to be a doctor. Ah, it must be a fine thing to be a doctor. To save life instead of handling death. How would you like to be a crime reporter, will he? Hey? <laughs> oh, no, thanks. <laughs> uh, I don't suppose they'd let me try to be a doctor now. Not at my age. No, if I can't be a doctor, I'll stick to my own job. It's nice and quiet here. You know, Tom? Huh? Can't help worrying, thinking about this bloke. Look at the back of his trouser leg. Green paint. Yeah, so it is. The car must have hit him there. Did the police see that when they brought the body in? Oh, yes, yes. Then whoever knocked him down must have been driving a car that had been freshly painted. That's about the size of it, Tom. And what's more, that paint couldn't have been put on the car many minutes. That's true, well, it's true. Are you sure you wouldn't have my desk at the evening, Echo? Oh, yeah, I've already told you. I like it here. It's peaceful. No one argues with me. I like it that way. <laughs> and my charges are always satisfied. I've never had a complaint yet about the accommodation. <laughs> Aren't you ever going to retire, will you? Yes, five months from now. Oh, not that I want to, man. No. I'll be sorry leaving here. <laughs> Oh, I'll be well taken care of. I'll put a tidy sum away, you know. Oh, would you like a cup of tea, Tom? I'm about to make myself well. Uh, no, thanks, Willie. I think I'll nip over to the police station. If I don't get a story soon, yours truly will be putting in an application for your job when you retire. Well, he was a character, all right. <laughs> what a picturesque turn of phrase he had. To save life instead of handling death. I thought about his words as I walked the 200 yards to the West London Police Precinct. Well, well. How's London's youngest and brightest crime reporter? A little sad. Yours truly, you know, if there's no news, it's bad news. Me no write about crime, me no eat. Do you know anything about the stiff who was knocked down tonight by a green-painted car? I, I just come from the morgue. Oh, so you've been talking to friend Willie, have you? Yes. The, the incident happened in your manner, Detective Sergeant Wallace. You better prepare to make a statement to the press. Oh, 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 you must be hard up, Tom. The tramp gets knocked down and already a juicy murder's about to be written up. Yes, you're right, Ted. I am hard up. I must get a story to look at Oh, just a minute, sure. He's a reporter still working, Sergeant. He's wanted on the telephone. Uh, uh, yes, he is. Uh, it's for you, Tom. Oh, thanks. Hello. Hello. Uh, speak up, caller. Hello. Uh, sorry, Tom. It's Willie. Oh, uh -huh. uh, You know, the... The municipal morgue. Yes, yes. Tom. Y yes, Willie, what's the matter? You, you, you sound as if... Tom, do me a favour, will you? What's that? Something funny is going on. I, I remembered you saying that you were going to the police station. Call in here on your way, will you? Well, yes, of course. I, I'm on my way now. Anything wrong? Wrong? Look, I may be old, Tom, but I'm not barmy, see? <laughs> You're the most sane man I know. Well, what's the trouble? It's about one of my charges. Your, your what? One of my customers. Oh. I... Oh, I know this sounds as though I'm going round the bend, but mm -hmm. a few minutes ago, I happened to be... Uh, yes, Willie? Hello. Hello, are you still there? Hello. Huh. It's funny. Come well, on, what's the matter? I don't know. But I'm going to find out. <laughs> it could have been anything. The telephone line going dead... 70-year-old Willie getting so absent-minded as to forget to finish the telephone conversation. As I say, it could have been anything. But I wasn't prepared for what it really was. I got to the front door, and I knocked. I waited. I knew that Willie kept the gate locked always. 
said with that soft, kindly grin of his that he didn't want anyone to come messing around with his charges. No answer. I knocked again. Still no answering call from Willie. No croaking voice cheerfully saying, I'm coming, I'm coming. I tried the handle. And the gate opened. My voice echoed through the building. Still no answering shout. As I entered the morgue itself with its long line of refrigerated cabinets all in a neat row as if awaiting my inspection, I had my first clutch of fear. And then I saw it. The swaying call to the telephone receiver. Will it fail to replace it? But where was he? And then I had a crazy thought. He's in there. He's in one of those cabinets. Number 23. She's a peaceful-looking old lady. Death hasn't disturbed the serenity of her features. But she isn't Willie. Uh, number 24. A shrunken face gazed at me without recognition. Why should he recognize me? I've never seen a guy in my life before. Nor in his life, either. Oh, death. I was going nuts. The old boy must have gone out for a packet of fags or something. But then why should he telephone me at the police station? Why, why the swinging pendulum of the telephone receiver? Uh, what the... Uh, who's there? Willie! Willie, stop playing hide and seek! Willie! The morgue was as silent as the cadavers it accommodated. Silent, did I say? <laughs> Stop gagging, will you? My nerves aren't so good. You, you sent for me. You said you wanted help. Come out, whatever you're hiding. <laughs> uh, my blood froze. It wasn't really laughing. Dear, shrunken, croaking voiced Willie, that, that mad laugh came from no human agency. That's a joke, isn't it? Tough young crime reporter Tom Dixon going nuts in the Metropolitan Police Mall. Now it had become an obsession. Willie had to be in the place. Willie was in grave danger. Willie was... Well, where was he? I ran back to the cabinets. Uh, not you, old chap. Uh, uh, sorry to disturb you. I... Uh, you're Willie. Now, where are you, Willie? Where are you? being accommodated in refrigerating cabinet number 28. Now, of course, you don't recognize me as you're lying there. How could you? You're dead. Smooth and world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. We promise you... It's the smoothest cigarette you can get. It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders. And the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3-5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new, smooth State Express 3.5s today. Well, well, well. What an extraordinary pastime for our crime reporting friend to indulge in. But uh, back to our story to the police morgue where Tom Dixon gazes down at his friend who has changed his status to that of guest. Poor Willie. Dying in harness, eh? Somebody put you in that pen, someone or, or something. But the dead can't walk or move or kill. <laughs> Where are you? Where are you hiding? 
I'll get to her. I know you killed Louie. <laughs> Why can't I get a dialing to him? Come on, come on. CRD, oh. so I'm Wallace speaking. Uh, Ted, thank goodness you're there. I'm speaking from the morgue. Well, look, Tom, if you're following up the hit and run story, you'll get nothing at the morgue. We've taken a sample of the paint from the tramp's trousers. No, it could be a stolen you, you don't understand. It's it's Willie. Willie? Yes. Oh, you mean old man Dalton? Yes. Oh, what about him? He's there, isn't he? <laughs> He's here, all right. He's no longer in charge. He's one of the charges. Yeah, look. Are you trying? No. Uh, what are you talking about? I'm trying to tell you. I've, I've just found him. Refrigerator cabinet number 28, reserved for corpses, awaiting autopsy or identification. We want an autopsy to discover how Willie died. He was murdered. The back of his head's bashed in. Yeah, what are you saying? Are you mad? Lying in a... Yes. Now, look, Tom. If this is a joke or a newspaper... Do I I'll... sound as if I'm joking? You better go on quickly. I'm not joking, Ted. I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared of my wits. Maybe I've lost him already. But my wits, though. But maybe that's what he wants, whoever it is listening to me now. He wants my fear to drive me away from yeah, here. Keep hold of yourself. Uh, keep hold of yourself. I'll be right over. All right. Did you hear that? Whoever or whatever you are, that was my friend, Sergeant Ted Wallace of the CID. In a couple of minutes, you'll be here. Say that a couple of constables. <laughs> you can't escape that, can you, huh? No windows. Everything's air conditioned. There's only one way for you to get out of this morgue, and that's through that door. <laughs> well, that you have to pass me, eh? <laughs> well, go on. Why don't you laugh, eh? Go on, laugh. I know you're hiding out of those cabinets. Laugh, you rotten, filthy murderer. Go on, scare me. <laughs> to every glass. Scared. Every nerve in my body began to tremble. If I didn't pull myself together, I'd, I too would become a candidate for one of those cabinets for corpses. What was the matter with Ted Wallace? Why did he take so long? And then I saw it. In the fifth row of the cabinets was one that I pulled out and not replaced. It had contained the dead body of a man who must have been in his early forties. Slowly it began to rise and, until it stood erect. It spoke. Go, mortal. Uh, Go. Leave uh, the dead to the dead. You, you, you. Leave. You, you, you can't fool me. Let us rest in peace. Oh, the old man was sent to his final uh, rest because it was decreed that he would want to end his mortal days. Oh, wait a minute. Pray. Who are you? Go. Uh, Lest we claim you. <laughs> It was. But I became crazy, too. I, I could take it no more. Who was I to be the avenger of Willie's death? The sentinel guarding the gates of death. I ran. I'm not a coward. I, I don't care. Let, let the police do their own death. Oh, 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 oh. Where are you going? Tommy? Oh, hey, take it easy, old man. Thank heavens you're here. I'm, I'm sorry, Ted. I, I can't get hold of myself. Have you brought anyone with you? Yes, of course. Two guns for us. Keep them here by the gate. There's something or someone in there. I, uh, and have you been taken? Drinking. Oh, come over here because you told me that Willie, dear old Willie, is lying in one of those cabinets. Yeah, yeah, that's what you said, cabinet 28. Well, come on, Shannon. Tell them that those two cops. Tell them not to move from the gate. Yes, all right. Anything for a quiet death. Oh, sorry, Tom. Yeah. I know that wasn't funny. Yeah. Is he really dead? Willie, I mean. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Let's go in. As we walked towards the cabinets, my feet felt like tons of lead. I could see Ted looking at me out of the corner of his eye, wondering if I'd brought him out on a hoax, that I was drunk, or worse. Cabinet 28. Yeah. You said he was murdered. You head bashed him. What were you running away from? I was I knew a ghost huh? and, and a, a killer scaring the wits out of me. Well, killer, ghost, you've got company. I've got the law with me. Why don't you laugh now, you rotten swine? Yeah, listen, Tom. I'm telephoning an ambulance. You're going to hospital. Well, maybe we'll both go to the hospital before we leave here tonight. Maybe we'd better book our accommodation here. <laughs> well, why don't you laugh at that ghost? Yeah, leave the ghost for a moment. Where's Willie? You don't understand. Somebody walked out of that cabinet. Oh, one of the corpses. Yes. Laugh as much as you like. <sighs> there he is. Five months to go before he was to say goodbye to his dead. And now death has claimed him permanently. Yeah. Stop searching the place with your eyes like that, will you? Oh. You make me nervous. <laughs> Making you nervous. You haven't heard anything. 
Wait till our friend starts making with his laugh. <laughs> All right. You satisfied that Willie's dead, eh? Yeah, I'm here, I am. Just look at that skull. You see? Yeah. Do you think a ghost did that? I think we'd better all go back to the station. I'll keep these two... Are you crazy? You can't see that. What about, what about the killer or whatever it is? He, he's here, hiding somewhere. Yes, I know, I know. It was a corpse that stood up. Yes, Ted. You've hit the nail on the head. It was a corpse that wasn't a corpse, no? Someone who was supposed to be dead. Someone who had to get out of here because... Yes. Yes, they had to get out of here before they commenced an autopsy on his live body. Yes. Is that right? Is that why you killed Willie? <laughs> Come on, Ted. Then. Uh, what, what now? The fifth row. Come on, quick. Huh? <laughs> this is it. And, uh, 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 that's what? No identification tag. This cabinet was supposed to be empty. And yet I saw a corpse stand up and frighten. Quick, back to the other one. Right. Now, look. There's supposed to be a corpse in this cabinet, but not the corpse of Willie Dalton. It says Arthur Hudson awaiting burial. Yeah. Well, now. Yes, yes, now, just a minute. Let me open this. Yeah. And that's poor Willie, eh? Yeah. His yeah. shirt's off. One shoe, and that's when I must have interrupted the killer. And I thought it was a ghost. <laughs> but don't you see, Ted? The undertakers would have arrived and poor Willie would have been buried as Arthur Hudson. Yes, and that means... That, that means the corpse that frightened me out of my wits was Mr. Hudson, who isn't a corpse. Yeah. Now, now look here, Tom, this sounds crazy. Now, look, sir. Even before I started getting scared, I, I couldn't search the mold properly because I daren't go too far from the entrance hall or the exit, if you like. But now that our two friends are at the gate, we're going to search this place until we find friend Hudson. There's nothing here, Tom. Well, he must have changed his hiding place when I ran like a scared rabbit. He, he must be in... Yes, he must be in one of those refrigerating cabinets. What do you mean? Playing at being a corpse for the second time? That's it. <laughs> We're going to get you. You'll swing for this. All right. And, uh, nothing there. That's not the next one. Uh, that's not there. Uh, well, no. What about this one? Uh, yeah. Ah. Well, I'll be... Quite a bloom on your cheeks for a dead man. Get up, corpse. Get up, chiller. Ah, have you got him? Yes, here he is. He looks pretty, doesn't he, with his eyes closed? Yeah. Yeah, careful, Tommy, maybe. Yeah, yeah we'll soon see. All I've got to do is press his nostrils together like this. If he stares, he won't mind. Like that. Mm. Ah, stand up, ghost. I... I, uh, oh, poor corpse. It's very cold, isn't it, without your clothes on? I'll bet you a hundred to one this swine didn't bother about his fingerprints. Willie would be missing, not dead. He was killed ten minutes before the morgue was due to shut for the night. Stop him! Stop him! Uh, 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 they've got him. Well, he's your name, Arthur Hudson. I'm arresting you for that murder. Please. Oh, I'm cold. I'm shivering. How <laughs> cold are you? I thought ghosts didn't feel the cold. Please, sir. Blanket or something that should arrive in the drugstore. Yeah. Please, I catch my death of cold. Oh, 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 oh. he'll catch his death of cold. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, sir. Oh, come in, Tom. Come in. Yeah, I read your piece this morning. Uh huh. You said there were questions that need to be answered. You said that there were likely to be sensational developments. That's right. Yeah. Well, it's all in a bag. Arthur Hudson. An out-of-work actor meets a Dr. Herbert Williams. Williams had been struck off the medical register after being sentenced for a drug offence. Mm -hmm. Well, now, he knew about Willie Dalton and the government morgue since he was at one time connected with the Municipal Pathological Department. Well, that was the time. Yeah, that was the scheme. Hudson pretends to be very sexy. Mm -hmm. Gets his landlady to phone Dr. Williams. Dr. Williams injects him with a drug, a drug that gives him an appearance of death, uh -huh. signs the death certificate, Manages to get him put into the police morgue. And you know what? What? All for a 50,000 quid life insurance. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Well, if poor Willie hadn't suspected something and hadn't telephoned me, they might have got away with it too. Yeah, that's it. The, the idea was for Hudson to put on Dalton's clothes and switch identities until Hudson was safely out of the building. He tried to frighten you. 
You see, he couldn't leave until he ah, did. He frightened me. Yeah. <laughs> if you hadn't arrived in time... Yeah, well, never mind that now. They're both behind bars. Although Fred Hudson is suffering from a severe chill. Really? You don't think that you're... Oh, excuse me. Yes. Hello? West London CRD. Sam Wallace speaking. Who? What? Yes, all right. I'll, uh, I'll look into it. Yeah, we'll send the man round right away. No, 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 not at all. I've got another story for you, Tom. That's good. What is it? Yeah, that was Morgan and Sons. Uh -huh. Also butchers. Their refrigeration room has been burgled. Uh, the carcass of beef has been stolen. <laughs> You're interested? You can go and fry yourself. <laughs> <laughs> young crime reporter. And as for that man Hudson, fancy giving poor old Willie Dalton such a cold reception. Actually, I don't think Mr. Hudson planned things very well, do you? The plan didn't have a ghost of a chance. <laughs> in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders. And the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3.5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. This is your host back again. Just a reminder of our rendezvous next week. Where are we going? Through the creaking door. Of course. <laughs> the manufacturers of... King Cigarettes invite you to listen next Saturday at 9 o'clock when they will again present... The Creaking Door.